Hi, I'm Steve Miller. Welcome to this latest video of how I use DxO Photo Lab to edit my uh, photos. Um, this one I just thought I'd go into um, soft proofing, uh, the soft proofing in DxO Photo Lab. Um, I do print in image, images myself now. I, uh, I've got a Epson ET8550 uh, printer that I use for doing my prints, which uh, I'd highly recommend it as a printer. It's very economical and you get some re you can get some really good prints out of it. But to get the best out of any printers, you have to do soft proofing in your software. Just um, in the past, I've I've tried printing and uh, I had some cheap printers, and but the um, inks were expensive, so I got compatible inks, and I never got the sort of results that I wanted from a printer. Uh, so I thought I'd go into it. A, couple of years ago and uh, I sort of realised I'd been doing it all wrong so I just thought I'd share this uh, of how I soft proof now uh, to get the best out of my printer. Any photographers out there I'd highly recommend getting a printer I mean I think it takes you to photography to the next level when you can actually print something out and uh, hold it and look at it you know it's 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 totally different than seeing it on a screen I think we send too much time just looking at screens so it is nice to, to get a print so right this is the image i thought i'd um i'd use just to show you i mean this is the edited image i'm just going to show you how i do the soft proofing now i actually edited the image so first thing you need to do really is to uh duplicate uh create a virt virtual copy so you it's only a small file you're creating on your uh, hard drive so if you create a virtual copy it's taking all them settings over to that virtual copy and now um all you need to do is turn on the soft proofing. So to find that, I'll show you over here. I have my um, tools down this side because I'm left-handed, but I will show you where to find it over here because this is what most people will be using over this side. So it comes under this the in the, the colour tab and you can turn on soft proofing, which you turn on there. Should all this work on a virtual copy when you're soft proofing? I think... If you don't create a virtual copy and you turn soft proofing on, it'll actually warn you. Right, but as you can see, we we end up with a white border. This is just to help with the soft proof, help with the soft proofing, and straight away you won't notice any difference really. That's because we've got the ICC profile set to sRGB, which is what you use for the um, for the um, monitor. You do have to make sure you're working on a calibrated monitor or you'd be wasting your time really because what you're seeing on the monitor um, might not be what you're sending to the printer for it to print out even if you do do soft proofing. So you, you have to have a calibrated monitor to, to do it properly. I I just use the Data Colour Spider X um, and just calibrate my monitor every month. Right, so now... Then what we have to decide is, um, well, basically, um, right, what size am I going to print it? I've got an A3 Plus printer, but if you wanted to just print it at, at um, say, 8 by 10 I'd set the crop. I always set the crop, actually, on the image before I export for printing. So on this, an 8 by if I wanted to print this at 8 by 10 that's like a 5 by 4 ratio. So I'd go into 5 by 4 and as you can see, there's something coming there. So I'd just do the crop again, just... For this print so I'll crop something like that so I know now when I can output that for an 8 by 10 um, print no problem now the next thing we're going to do is we're going to choose what paper to use um, this is where people get confused I mean you have to use I decided to use permajet paper no particular reason just when I when I was looking into it there's in the UK it's permajet or photo speed and I, I got a a sample pack from Permajet and I liked the what I was getting off them so uh, the outcome you know the prints I was getting the, I liked the look of them so I just thought I'd go with Permajet and um, what you can do you have to use the ICC what they call an ICC profile for that paper so they're on the website if you use Permajet photo speed you'll have to download the ICC profile for the particular paper you're choosing I've got a few loaded here and I'll just show you, um, these are the, the ones I've, I did actually send some test prints to Permajet and 
so the uh, profiles are specifically for my printer but they do have some generic profiles on the website that they're, they're fine I'm, I have, have used some once if I haven't got uh, the my own profile I've used the like that one there the map proofing one that's just a generic one off the website but so you can you can sort of pick I'll just pick one of these that's a paper profile and now you've got some cho choices down here perpetual perceptual or relative um, rendering intent first of all why I usually do I, I'd like to turn on the simulate uh, paper and ink this sort of gives you a bit more idea of what it's going to look like and this is quite interesting now if I show you if I hover over these just if you just watch the image as I hover over these you'll see the color shifts with the different papers this is why we're doing um, the, the uh, soft proofing so as I hover over each profile like there it's showing me that the red one in there is showing me that um, some of them colors are out of gamut so it wouldn't look like that when it was printed quite a good way of sort of choosing which which paper you want to use if you look at the oyster that's a cool paper and you can see the color shift so i go from muse, museum heritage which is like a a rag paper a, a fine art paper matte paper that you get the colors better on that where the oyster is quite cool if you only had oyster paper you could you could try and warm the the image up uh, when you're soft proofing to uh to get the best results so if I if I click on that and what I do I bring up the original image you can set that as your um, your reference image which I have done and then you can go on split screen and it'll show you the um, the difference between the images so as you can see this is how I've edited the image how I want it this is how I wanted it to look on the screen so and in print if I use the the um the this the paper the oyster paper you'd see that it's going to come out it's a cool paper it's I think it's got optical brightness in there so it's quite a cool paper what you could try and do I mean if you really wanted to I mean what I probably think is well maybe that's not the paper for this uh this image maybe you know I'd use the smooth pearls a bit nearer so I'd probably go for that I wouldn't worry too much about this here the uh, that's you know you're not going to lose a lot in the print there you probably wouldn't even notice it but I'll just show you like there maybe I could try warming that image you know the proof image just warm it up a bit so it does look a bit closer to the uh, my original image But um, like I say, what I'll do, I'll say, right, I'm going to use a smooth pearl for this one. It's probably going to be a bit of, in fact, I'll even go with the Museum Heritage because we haven't got anything blowing out that, you know, that would produce a really good print. There's not a lot of difference there. If anything, there's probably a, just a little bit of contrast um, lacking. So what you can do is on that image, you can just, just add a little bit of contrast to the proof image. And there's not a lot of difference between them now you're never going to get as um exactly the same as yeah you, you know you've got a backlit monitor you're never going to get the same on paper but that is quite close um just to show these red things that show in here the, the red warning signs you turn that off uh, i've just got it turned on here so that's your uh, gamut warning for your papers you can turn that on you can turn it off on and off for your uh, monitor as well but if I'm soft proofing, I usually have the gamma warning, which is on the histogram there, and it'll just show you, you know, what the problems are. I mean, if I go, if I go over here and now on that image, I don't know if I say the blues and I, I up the cont the, the uh, blue. See, that's good. That's out of range now. Um, the printer won't better print that, but obviously you wouldn't want to do that anyway. But that's all that show. It's just saying, saying to you this. The printer can't actually print that it's going to 
print the nearest it can to it so that's what that what the warnings for so it's a good idea having these warnings on so once I've got that image that's my proof at this side and it's looking quite good to the original image it's not too big a difference there. I'd be quite happy with that um, I don't actually print from um, Photolab I'll export as a, a TIFF and then use the Epson um, software to print so I'll just show you how I do that um, now I've got the I've got everything I'll just just swap just make sure with the perceptual and the relative I just I just flick in between and see which one I like the best nothing technical just do it by eye and on this one I think the perceptual is looking better it's just that little bit brighter so, so that's the image that I would uh, export I'll just show you how I export now if I was printing a 8x10 there I'd um, I just export that as a TIFF export as a TIFF so choose another folder I have got a folder for me uh, for me prints so I've got a folder there 8 by 10 prints so I'd click that folder click on that that's where I want the the TIFF file to go uh, I wouldn't rename um, and then this is where I'll set up the size so I'd say I want 300 dpi I'd en enable resizing and on the longest side obviously it wants to be inches and the longest side is 10 inch I don't know watermark uh, just just a normal thing that you you know way of um, exporting really and then for this I looked into it and the Epsom said that it work in a, a Adobe RGB um, sort of workspace so I'd, I'd, I'd export is an Adobe RGB and then export that so this is resizing it you know it'll it'll resize it at 300 dpi to go up my printer and then this is how I use Epson print layout I'll just show you what it looks like on the Epson print layout with that image that I've just done so if I go on the uh, find the print that I wanted to print which was that one and open that up and there it is on a that's been going to be printed on an A4 size piece of paper so any uh, same again I'd have to make sure the settings were all right um, I did it on me museum heritage I know that's a velvet fine art paper and I do the ICC profile as the um, velvet fine art museum heritage i said i was going to use that's what i exported it as with the icc profile and this is same you can turn on um black point compensation i think i did it as perceptual so that should look better better and then uh, there we have it would have a, a 10 by 8 um print i just send that off to the printer um and like i say it's definitely it's definitely worth looking at printing your, your own images i mean I, I did go through a stage where i sent them to to print to get them printed i sent them off to printers but sometimes they come back and they uh, just didn't look right they were too dark and they were the colors weren't right and you've wasted your money there whereas if you have your own print you can do a bit of testing and uh yeah it's really satisfying when the uh, the print comes out and yeah it's uh it, it's really worth looking at so anyway i hope that helps i hope it uh I've tried to simplify it as much as I can. I hope it's not too complicated, that, but... Okay, right, thanks for watching. Bye.